What's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the general tips in regards to the information gathering section on the clinical simulations exam. Are you ready? Let's go! As I'm sure you're already fully aware, but the clinical simulations exam is a beast. It is one of the most difficult exams to pass in all of the medical field. That is why here recently on this channel and on our website at respiratorytherapyzone.com, we have been releasing a lot of helpful content to help students pass the clinical simulations exam on their first or next attempt. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips to help you navigate your way through the information gathering section with success. These tips aren't in any particular order and there's really no structure to this video. I'm just going to be spitballing some things that you need to look for during this section on the clinical sims exam. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. First and foremost, if you're new to the channel or you're not familiar with the structure of the clinical simulations exam, we actually just released a massive video that can help teach you everything you need to know about it. So really quick, we'll just talk about what is information gathering. This is the section on the exam that provides information about the patient that is normally obtained in chart review or diagnostic testing, such as vital signs, ABG results, etc. This is the section that you will be directed to in order to find out more about the patient. They will list out 15 to 20 parameters for you to choose from. You must select only those things that are important for this patient at this particular time given what you know, and avoid selecting anything that could be dangerous for the patient. Now let's get into the tips. First we're going to be talking about ABGs or arterial blood gases. This, of course, is something that you want to recommend in order to assess the patient's acid-base balance, oxygenation, or ventilation. So, for example, say the case that you are going through is for a patient with COPD. Pretty much always you are going to want to recommend an ABG for this patient during the information gathering section. The next tip concerns the position of the trachea you will want to assess the patient's tracheal position in order to identify atelectasis or a pneumothorax. And remember, the trachea will shift away from the affected side if the patient has a pneumothorax. The trachea will shift towards the affected side if the patient has atelectasis. Our next tip has to do with chest percussion. You should assess percussion of the chest in order to identify a pneumothorax or pneumonia. For a pneumothorax, the patient will have a hyperresonant or tympanic percussion note. If the patient has pneumonia, their chest percussion note would be dull or flat. Here's a quick tip. You want to select an MIP or NIF, maximum inspiratory pressure or negative inspiratory force, in order to assess the patient's respiratory muscle strength when you want to recommend weaning for the patient from mechanical ventilation. And while we're at it, we'll discuss vital capacity. You would also select vital capacity in order to check the patient's respiratory muscle strength for weaning, and you will also select vital capacity to check their respiratory muscle strength if they have a neurological disorder. The next tip involves when you should select minute ventilation and RSBI. You would want to select these two in order to check for the adequacy of ventilation for weaning. Now let's talk about the patient's sputum. You would want to assess the patient's sputum in order to check for an infection. So say you get a patient that has a fever, if this is the case you should automatically think that they have an infection, and if they do, that's when you would want to assess the patient's sputum. And on that note, only recommend antibiotics for a patient with a suspected infection. Now let's talk about PFTs. You should select certain PFT tests in order to check to see if the patient's disease is obstructive or restrictive. Whew! Are you guys still with me? I know we're going through these tips at a fast pace, but just hang in there. And if you need to, you can go back at the end and watch this stuff over again so that you can be sure that you remember it. 
But if you are still with me, let's keep moving right along because I still have several good tips that I want to share with you. All right, guys, I'm back. Now let's talk about blood pressure. Always select blood pressure and information gathering for a patient that has a cardiovascular disorder. So if they have CHF or something else that's going on with the heart, always recommend to check the patient's blood pressure. Now let's talk about lab tests. Select only certain laboratory tests that would be necessary for the patient's specific situation. For example, you would select to assess the white blood cell count if the patient has an infection because that would be necessary in this situation. So only select certain lab tests if it's necessary for that patient's specific situation. And the same applies to x-rays and imaging tests. Only select those when they would help diagnose the patient. For example, if you suspect that the patient has pneumonia, obviously you want to do a chest x-ray for this patient. And another example, you would want to recommend a neck x-ray if you have a child that is suspected to have croup or epiglottitis or to check for a foreign body aspiration. Moving right along, this tip involves intracranial pressure. You would recommend to check the patient's intracranial pressure if you learn in the scenario that they've had a head or brain injury. And if the patient is unconscious, what would you recommend? I'm gonna pause for a second to give you a chance. Do you know? If they're unconscious, you would recommend a Glasgow Coma Scale because that would be necessary. All the tips so far have been what to recommend in certain situations. And now this tip is what not to recommend. Throughout the information gathering sections of the clinical SIMS exam, often you will see listed your analysis. <laughs> and I'll be honest, as a respiratory therapy student in your school, you probably haven't even seen this word or heard of it, but they list it on almost every version of the exam. So when you see it, my recommendation is to just skip it, never select it, because it's only going to make you lose points. And last but not least, if you really want to increase your chances of passing the exam, make sure you smash that like button. No, seriously, that's not one of the tips. But if you do, it really helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And like I mentioned earlier, the clinical sims exam is without a doubt one of the most difficult exams to pass in all of the medical field. It's unfortunate that so many students struggle to pass this exam. And that is one of the reasons why we've been creating so much content here lately for the CSE so that we can help more students earn their RRT credentials. And thankfully, our materials have already been helping so many students pass this exam. So if you haven't done so already, definitely make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on the videos that we have coming out soon for this topic. And also, definitely be sure to go to our website and sign up for our email list because we're constantly sharing information that can help you pass the exam. Not to mention, you'll get some awesome free bonuses just for signing up. Just go to respiratorytherapyzone.com. Alright guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that these tips were helpful for you. I'll be honest with you, these are just a few tips that I have because I couldn't possibly share them all with you in one video. If you thought this stuff was helpful and you want to learn more, definitely check out our CSE study guide. We cover all the tips found here and we go into much more detail and there's so many more that I want to share with you. At the time that I'm recording this video, our CSE study guide has only been out for a couple of months, but it has already been helping so many students pass the exam. I get messages every single day from students thanking me for creating these study guides and I'm so fortunate and blessed to be in this position to be able to help students reach their goals. So if you're really serious about passing the exam, definitely check it out. I'll leave a link down below in the description. That's it for this one. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video and as always. Breathe easy, my friend.